My friend, who works in the hospital, told me he saw my newlywed wife in the men's clinic. He initially thought we were just overindulging, thinking I was exhausted. However, he saw her accompanying another man. I explained that it might be her brother. He said, then they must have a really close relationship. I wouldn't kiss my sister like that. Great. My wife has a new husband. On the day of my ex-wife's wedding banquet, I jumped onto the table and started singing loudly. The entire hall went silent as chickens. Unexpectedly, a woman appeared behind me and said, I'm here to take your worthless life. I went to my ex-wife's wedding banquet. Strictly speaking, Willow couldn't really be considered my ex-wife because she married me just for the company's housing benefits. To her, the marriage certificate was just a prerequisite contract for buying a house. One day, my friend, a urologist, called me and said he saw my newlywed wife in their department, but she was with another man. He advised me, I initially thought you to lacked restraint, wearing you out. Cheer up. It's good you're not the one worn out. I tried to stay calm and explained. Maybe it's her brother, he paused and said. Then they must have a really close relationship. My sister wouldn't kiss me like that. Then I asked, and she cried. She admitted that it was her first love, Itu Makoto. Willow knew I was most afraid of her crying, so with tears streaming down her face, she said, Do you know how painful it is for someone to have this disease? You have a career, a family, and a promising future, but Makoto only has me. I wanted to ask, doesn't he a parents? But I didn't, some things are so obvious that asking further only brings self-humiliation. Chasing Willow took my entire college life, for full years. I thought I had melted the iceberg, but it turned out the mountain turned into water. Washing me onto the shore, at her aunt Itumakoto's wedding banquet, everyone was laughing. Congratulations to her for getting promoted, getting a raise, and buying a house at 25. No one knew there was an ex-husband sitting in the corner on the right. I could only laugh with them, raising my glass, saying that the reason we are gathered here today is because I am a big fool. Then I started singing sad songs, one toast to freedom, one toast to death, one toast to the bride who no longer belongs to me. I used to think his lyrics were pretentious, but now I sing them with emotion, feeling every word, the pain. It was excruciating. Willow was probably afraid I'd cause a scene if I drank too much. She knew exactly how to touch my weak spots. She softly said to me, George, I've never seen you cry. Don't make me feel bad. Okay, we can still be friends. With blurry eyes, I pretended to be surprised and shouted, we can remarry. But I don't have another set of housing benefits. The entire table of guests fell silent as chickens. Then I heard a coquettish yet undisguised laugh from behind me. A stunning stranger walked into the banquet hall. I asked her, why are you laughing? Is this funny? I asked loudly, have you ever loved someone with all your life? The beauty stood in front of me. No, she said, but I'm here to take your worthless life. I have to admit, I'm not cut out for drinking. When I first started working, it was a tradition to get heavily drunk at dinner gatherings. The next day, my boss insisted I take a day off. He said, you really impressed me, George. The developer said, if you down that glass, they'd consider you for the next project. You said his son, who squandered money abroad, wasn't as good as you and that he should leave the position for you in the future. I asked you to apologize to Mr. Ja and show some sincerity. You said you learned Latin dance in college and insisted on dancing on the table. Seven or eight guys couldn't stop you. Since then, whenever he took me to social gatherings, he ensure I didn't touch a drop of alcohol if he weren't married, I'd suspect he had feelings for me. In short, when I woke up in the hotel bed, my hair was a mess, and my white shirt was all wrinkled. It was a familiar hangover feeling. Luckily, the bed was more comfortable than the one in my apartment. Ha! Huh? I sat up in shock, my coat falling to the floor. With trembling hands, I lifted the quilt. Fortunately, there was no one beside me. My honor was intact, but then I looked down. Crap! What's with the red high heels by the bed? Just as I gasped, to room card beat, a girl with a slender figure, still in that fiery red dress, but now wearing flats, walked in. She casually tossed a bag of breakfast onto the coffee table. Yo, still alive, ex-hubby, still lying around? Do I need to carry you out in a grand sedan chair? The cliché scene I once despised was now unfolding before me. 
to girl punctured the so milk with a swoosh, like stabbing my fragile heart. I clutched my chest and asked, last night, everything that should and shouldn't have happened, happened, she said succinctly, how much do you want? I started the process or rather, I truly panicked, logically, no one would be interested in an ex-husband who caused a drunken scene at his ex-wife's wedding, let alone such a vibrant and lively girl. Aren't you curious about what you said? The girl smiled mischievously and poked a steam bun with a toothpick. You said you're the second boss of Henshu Group, with a hundred million in savings. Two houses in Shijong one given to your ex-wife. You begged for reconciliation seven times, called her twenty-eight times. You don't smoke or drink, love hiking and swimming, and have six-pack ABS yet to be confirmed. Height 182 weight 68. And as for your other asset, my mind buzzed, my jaw clenched. Stop, stop, don't mention that. The girl made a gesture of zipping her lips, and added one last jab. Your other asset is quite impressive. Even the most good-natured person would be angered by her. My face turned cold. What's it to you? Did I ask for your help? I grabbed my coat, shook it out, and put it on quickly, then searched for my car keys and phone. Yes. I drank too much last night and lost control, if you have demands, make them. I didn't offend you, no need to do this to me. The girl was taken aback, seemingly not expecting me to get angry, but she wasn't scared, pausing for two seconds before laughing, revealing to sharp little tiger teeth. George, so you can get angry too, now it was my turn to be stunned. How do you know who I am, she sat cross-legged, not caring that she was still in a dress. You confessed everything last night. Seeing her bare legs, I quickly looked away. I'm not wasting any more words on you. I stormed out. Her voice chased me from behind. Hey, you drank your ex's wine. Don't you want some breakfast porridge? Eat your head. I booked a ticket while entering the elevator, eager to disappear from this city. The dream was over. It was time to return to my life as a corporate slave. Ting. The elevator reached the first floor and my phone finally got a signal. My mom called, who the hell sold me out? Listlessly, I answer, hello, mom. Did you pick her up? Has she changed a lot? I barely recognized her from the photos. My mom's excitement was evident on the other end, that Mary Oberl. No wonder you two were childhood friends. She came back after so many years and went straight to find you. Who? I froze, are you dumb? Who else, Maria, the girl who lived next door to us? As I reached the hotel entrance, I turned around abruptly like a sunflower following the sun. The receptionist looked at me with a bewildered expression, Maria. My brain felt like a fish pond that had just been bombed. My childhood friend who went abroad for high school and hadn't been in touch for five or six years, I was doomed. If Mariano all the embarrassing stories from my childhood to my teenage years, now she could release a complete collection. Beautiful, sharp taunt, and ruthless if there were a modern version of the Heaven Sword and Dragon Saber. The one holding the knife in a blood spattered hull. I knocked on the door meekly. Mary Asmolt slowly finished the last sip of her so milk and threw it in the trash. Then she grabbed my tie and yanked me into the room, kicked the door shut with her long legs, and started punching me like raindrops. You heartless bastard. It's only been six years and three months, and you only now recognize me. If you dare step out of this hotel, I'll break your legs. I let her vent. It didn't hurt much, but her tone carried a deep resentment. But seriously, you've changed so much. I tried to divert the blame. Why don't you ask David? If he recognizes you, I'll let you hit me again. Hey, stop hitting. Grandma, David was one of our childhood friends. When Maria's family first moved in, David tried to scare her with bugs. But before I could warn her, she grabbed a shovel and smashed a grass snake into pieces, as for the bug, it was never found. From then on, David was in awe, shifting his loyalty from me to her. In short, Maria was an extreme contrast of a crazy beauty. As beautiful and radiant as she appeared, her inner nature was equally wild. She stopped and rolled her eyes. Why should I care if David recognizes me? I only care about you. Her sudden directness caught me off guard. Just as my heart started to race, she smirked and pulled out her phone. Scrolling through the photo album, last night's performance was spectacular. If you run away, who am I supposed to blackmail? I sobered up, 
Recalling the mess I made at Willow's engagement party, my face turned red. Willow and her friends were probably mocking me right now, or she was busy being affectionate with her first love. Blackmail way. I smiled. Let's go to the mall. Take whatever you like. After all, you bailed me out. I should thank you. Mariah lively bumped my shoulder. Hey, didn't you help me once too? I was puzzled. She glared at me. You forgot again, didn't you? Wait, wait, don't hit me. Let me think. Oh, I remembered. In elementary and middle school, Maria was always the star kid on our street, the beautiful girl from the U family, so smart and good looking, unlike my beau. When we reached high school, she got into the best school in the province. I went to the second best, and David went to a vocational school. Everyone, including my parents, assumed that Maria, with her beauty, intelligence, and talent, would be the beloved princess even at the top school. After all, she was so perfect. However, in our second year of high school, she fell ill. It was a heart problem, and after surgery, she had to take medication containing hormones that caused uncontrollable weight gain. I blame myself for being too preoccupied with getting into the honors class and not reaching out to her. Until one day, my mom mentioned over dinner, didn't the you girl fall ill and miss half a semester? I heard she's been in bad shape since returning. I retorted, no way, she's strong, even David can't beat her. My dad knocked my head with his chopsticks, you idiot. Your mom means you should check on her, see how she's doing, and invite her over for a meal. We're old neighbors, but we never had that meal. Because I ended up in the hospital, after a fight, I had bought a bag of snacks in a red plastic bag and planned to pick Mary up from school with David, we didn't tell her in advance. We waited at the school gate as many students came out, but not Maria. Then I saw a group of bows pushing and shoving. Your desk mates with Maria. Marry her in the future. Screw off, I wouldn't marry a pig. Her family is rumored to get relocated. Don't you want to save decades of hard work? It's all the same with the lights off. No way. I can't even kiss her. You chase her. Maria was among the spar students, silently hanging her head. The vibrant spirit was gone. She clutched the corners of her school uniform, which no longer fit her slender figure, making a group of bows burst into laughter, insulting her. But she didn't cry. She was still so proud. She was, after all, a 16-year-old girl. In an instant, I felt a surge of hot blood through my veins. My eyes were tinged red with the dusk, and I heard my calm voice, David, hold my stuff. Then I jumped off my bike, grabbed the lead bow, dragged him out of the gate, and punched him, then flipped him over my shoulder. I had practiced boxing. I didn't like fighting, but my dad did forcing me to train during summer and winter breaks and even earn a provincial competition certificate. I used to say it was a civilized era who fought anymore, but at that moment, I felt proud of my dad. Debose tried to pull me off. Who are you? Anyone who touched me got hit. Anyone who talked too much got hit. Damn it. How dare they mistreat the girl cherished by our entire neighborhood. Until Maria's slightly tearful voice came from behind me. She hugged me. Stop fighting. George, stop. I wiped the blood off my face, smeared it on the guy under me, pulled him up, and pressed his head down. Apologize, the bow, with a black eye and a nosebleed, looked at me with a mix of hatred and fear. You can come at me, but you better not be alone. If I see you again, I'll beat you again unless you transfer or move away. Got it, that was actually my first fight. I don't even know why, I was pretty shallow, always chasing after pretty girls in class, helping them with chores, but when I saw Mariah being bullied, nothing else mattered. That sunset was especially beautiful, I remember the wind and the golden leaves falling along the street. David vividly described my heroic act. I pedaled the bike with Mary on the back, heavy, a bunch of weaklings. Mariah buried her head in my back, mumbling something. What? Neither David nor I heard clearly. She smiled through her tears. Nothing, thank you, guys, brothers, later. Mary eventually left that unfriendly school. Her family got relocated, her father got promoted, and the whole family moved abroad. Memories are like fine sand, slitting through our fingers at the time but leaving behind a shared beach. But you promised me, no backing out. Mary said, I haven't gone shopping since I came back to the country. 
I also want hot pot. You have no idea how much I couldn't stand the food over there. Now, through her own effort and perseverance, she had slimmed down and lost her youthful immaturity. Her every gesture and smile revealed a dazzling beauty. I texted my boss, I'm taking two more days of annual leave. My boss responded with an exasperated emoji. What, are you going to attend someone else's baby shower? Maria snatched my phone and sent a selfie of us. She wrote, oh, no, just a persistent suitor who won't take no for an answer. She typed so fast I couldn't stop her. My boss went silent for a while, then he replied with a surprised expression. I knew that although Mary said she was going to make me treat her to a big meal, it was really to cheer me up. Unexpectedly, we ran into some unwelcome acquaintances. She went to the fitting room to change clothes, and I went next door to buy her coffee. I ran straight into Willow and her childhood friend Ita Makoto. They were walking hand in hand and noticed me at the same time. Willow's expression changed slightly, avoiding eye contact. But Itu Makoto, with a smug look, said, Hey, Willow, isn't this your old acquaintance? Not going to introduce us. His tone and demeanor were infuriating. I couldn't be bothered to respond, but he kept pushing. Hey man, take a hint. You've lost. Accept it. Clinging on won't make Willow pity you. I frowned. If you're not fully recovered, don't leave the hospital. If you can't talk like a human, don't speak. Seeing her husband getting angry, Willow hurriedly tried to calm things down. George, let's let the past stay in the past. Okay. I know you're having a hard time letting go. But, a sharp female voice interrupted, but I really don't know where you get your confidence, the crisp sound of high heels approached. Maria, in a new Chanel V-neck red coat that perfectly matched her bright red lips, was exuding a powerful aura. She took the coffee I bought and slowly stirred it, lazily scanning Willow and Itu Makoto with her beautiful, captivating eyes. Miss Willow, we meet again, she smiled. I think you misunderstand. You were just a village George traveled through. When someone is used to magnificent sights, it's normal to take a walk in a small village. But people born in big cities don't stay in small villages forever. After all, people strive to climb higher. You understand that better than anyone, right? Her words hit the mark, making Willow's eyes redden. Sharp-tongued, elegant, and lethal. Itu Makoto, regaining his composure, angrily retorted, Who are you to talk like that? Who do you think you are? Maria looked at him with disdain. Oh, I almost forgot about you. I've never seen anyone eat leftovers and then break the bowl. Even a beggar under a bridge would say a few kind words. You, however, live off women. I hope you never lose your job because someone like you in the market would be too cruel to other women. Good. Very good. The faces of this despicable couple turned green and white. Willow looked at me with a complicated expression. But I ignored her. My pure love for her was long gone. How did I do? Once they left, Mary returned to her bright and playful self. I gave her a thumbs up, Oscar worthy. This coat suits you well, I'll sign for it. Do you want to buy a bag too? She smiled, flipping her hair, so generous, Axabi. Aren't you afraid I might accidentally fall in love with you? I sigh, not really, I just realized that some people can't be changed. Some are destined to be ungrateful, my money doesn't grow on trees. It's better spent on those who deserve it. Maria suddenly paused mid-zip of her coffee. I realized my last sentence might have been too intimate. Um, I don't really need a bag. Let's not buy it. Mary inexplicably sped up her speech, blinking. I haven't been home in a long time, always thinking about Eddie's cooking. I responded without thinking, sure, want to go home together. Wasn't that like inviting her to meet the parents? Why did the atmosphere suddenly feel strange? Marion, I did many things together that I had never done before. I used to drop countless hints to Willow to join me, but when someone doesn't love you, they're blind to it. We went to the arcade together. Mary had ragging me to play the two-player dance machine, and I took her to play World of Warcraft. We watched horror movies in a private cinema, and when she got scared, she'd start punching me, sending popcorn flying everywhere. We flew kites in an open field on the outskirts of the city until we were exhausted, lying on a hammock in the shade, drinking soda dot dot in the park. Maria played ring toss while I played archery. Two adults having a blast in the children's area. When our turns were over, we met up, 
and in unison, said, for you. Her prize from the ring toss, and mine from archery, were the dolls we both loved as children. It turns out she still remembered. It turns out, I still remembered too. Returning to the hotel at night, utterly exhausted, Marie seemed worn out, probably not used to such high-intensity activities. I bought her some porridge and was about to check the return tickets for tomorrow when. Willow called, her voice was soft, with a hint of tears, and she sounded on the verge of breaking down. George, I just came back from a class reunion. Now I'm alone and feel like someone is following me. I'm really scared. Can you come and keep me company? My phone was on speaker, which was a bit awkward. I turned to look at Maria. Her face seemed even paler, but when she saw me looking, she forced a smile. If you can't let go, go then. Why are you looking at me? I asked her, what's wrong with you? Why do you look so pale? Maria, being strong-willed, insisted it was nothing, but her hand was clutching her chest where her heart was. In that moment, time seemed to stop. Willow's sobs continued on the other end of the phone. I know, I shouldn't be bothering you anymore. I grabbed the jacket from the chair and shoved the room key and car keys into my pocket. Maria's eyes showed a flicker of sadness. Then I said, You're right, you shouldn't. You can contact your fiance, seek help from the nearest gas station or convenience store, or call the police. Willow seemed stunned. There was silence on the other end of the line. She probably never expected me to refuse her. After all, even for the humiliating task of attending her wedding, I had come when she softened her tone. She said, George, why? Where are you? You've never spoken to me like this before. I reached out my hand to Maria. Do you want me to carry you to the hospital? Can you get up? Do you have any emergency medication in your bag? Then, thinking about it, I spoke into the phone. I didn't before, but I do now, and I will in the future, goodbye. Willow, hash hash hash, I carried Moriato the car and headed to the nearest hospital. The doctor looked at us with a bit of reproach, if it's a chronic heart condition, why didn't you come for a checkup as soon as you got back? You young couples really don't take your health seriously. Forget the girl, but what kind of boyfriend are you? I hung my head as I got scolded. Maria snickered behind me, I turned to glare at her. She made a funny face at me, so childish, get a full body checkup, just to be safe. No need, Mariah frowned. I know my body, just some medicine and a good sleep will do. This time, it was my turn to lecture her. Are you the doctor, or is he the doctor? She pouted. So I softened my voice to coax her. I'll stay with you. We'll do the checkup quickly and go home after. Okay. Quickly, a full checkup takes hours. Even if it takes all night, I'll stay with you. I blurted out. While Maria was inside getting a CT scan, I sat on the waiting area bench, lost in thought. My mind drifted back to an earlier time when I had seen Maria Haven attack. But back then, as a clueless eight or nine-year-old kid, I had no concept of what a heart condition was. In elementary school, Maria was a wild, agile monkey, a natural actress. In front of adults, she was the perfect student with her ponytail, but as soon as their backs were turned, she would corner and beat up any bow who bullied the girl in front of her. One day, the sunset was beautiful, and the screams were loud. David and a few others were teasing Anna, the pretty girl from our neighborhood, about her chest size, Maria pinned David down and punched him hard. After she finished, she dusted off her jeans, her tone casual yet imposing. Next time you dare snap a girl's bra strap or run your mouth, see what happens, the bows, slim man stout, all shook their heads vigorously. I silently thanked my stars for not being a jerk. Mariah shouted, what, cat got your tons? Apologize, sorry, sorry, to me, apologize to her. Anna smiled as the bows lined up to apologize. David said to Maria, Maria, calm down, calm down. Then he ran off to buy sodas. Maria hooked her arm around my shoulder and asked, How about that? Am I cool or what? Still not falling from me. Suddenly, a large drop of blood fell on my hand, startling red. Both of us were shocked, and it wasn't until the second and third drops fell that I panicked and yelled, Maria, what's happening? You, you. The girl who had just been a fearless ringleader fainted before everyone's eyes, her face pale and unconscious. 
Even when she was sick, she was always meddling, acting chivalrous. During her lowest points, isolated and shunned, she still smiled brightly and boldly. Never one to vocalize her struggles, making her all the more heartbreaking. When she came out of the exam room, she tried to sound cheerful. Let's go home and sleep. I'm fine. I insisted on supporting her, checking the test sheet and looking for the next station. The nurse leading the way looked envious. Girl, your boyfriend is so nice, so gentle and patient. You wouldn't believe how many times we see pregnant women here looking for their husbands to sign forms, only to find them playing loud video games in the corridor. Maria chuckled softly. Yes, he is really good. She glanced at me with an almost imperceptible tenderness. He's indeed very good. The more I thought about it, the stranger it felt. Hey. Wait. Why does it sound like you're giving me the good guy card? Explain yourself. Maria, this vague talk can be misleading. Both the nurse and Mariah lot. After the checkup, the doctor said there were no major issues. I drove, and Maria sat in the passenger seat. George. Yeah. I want to ask you something. Go ahead. Never mind. Suddenly I don't want to ask anymore. I had to stop at a flashing red light, feeling helpless. Come on. You always speak your mind. Holding back now will make both of us uncomfortable. She fiddled with her fingers. I'm afraid asking will just embarrass myself. I'm proudful and hate losing. My curiosity grew, like a cat's gentle scratch on my heart. But I knew her well enough not to push. At the next intersection, another red light, she suddenly looked at me. George, you're so attentive and patient, accompanying me for checkups. Is it because you've done it so many times with Willow that you've become an expert? I was stunned. Maria forced a smile. Hey, it's okay. I just wanted to hear the truth. Don't worry, I'm not that fragile, I said. Yes and no. She raised an eyebrow and asked, What do you mean? I did accompany Willow many times, from queuing at Starbucks at dawn to get her favorite limited edition cup, to doing her nails, to standing in line at Disneyland. But, she seemed to think that all of this was my obligation, if I made even a tiny mistake in the plants, she would give me the silent treatment. This made me think that my efforts were worthless, that all girls would be just as hard to please. She clicked her tongue in disdain, simp, simp, and you ended up with nothing, until today, when you said I could go back to rest, when we left the hospital, you said thanks, very quietly, but I heard it. I can assure you, Maria, that everything I do is not because of practice, but because you deserve it. If you were willing to risk everything to find me, how could I let you lose the bet? She stayed silent, I started feeling more and more insecure. As I leaned closer, I saw that her beautiful face was covered in tears, her eyes red from crying. I pulled her tightly into my arms, George, you pig. If you had told me earlier, I would have chased you long ago, we returned to City C. After graduating, David opened an internet cafe, just on the way back home, when we went in. He was still there playing games, he looked up at me, then at Maria his squinted eyes suddenly whitening. Wow. Man, you did it. Your new girlfriend is way prettier than that willow whatever. I was wondering when a celebrity came to our place. What's her name? Mary asked and stepped forward. Then she grabbed David by the ear. I stifled my laughter. He yelped in pain, going from envy to fear to pleading. Granny, I recognize you. I recognize you. Maria, please have mercy. I discreetly left a pack of good cigarettes. Sorry, brother, as the saying goes, better you than me. There was no other option. When my mom saw Maria, she was overjoyed. Oh, my dear Maria, Auntie has been looking forward to your return. You said you liked the shrimp pan pork knuckle I make, so I prepared them, just waiting for you. Your uncle went out to buy you some roast chicken. Are you thirsty? What fruit do you want to eat? My mom gave me a side glance. Don't you have any manners? Get the fruit. I always knew my place in this family. For instance, now, even though my mom and Mary were chatting and laughing on the sofa like long-lost mother and daughter, I could peel a grapefruit or wash some grapes without needing to ask for their opinion. At dinner, I could eat the vegetables I wanted. No one dared to take them from me. My mom, trying to pry, asked Maria, Maria, you're so beautiful and capable, you must have had many suitors abroad. Our generation is more open, we understand free love. 
Maria kept smiling. Auntie, you're so trendy. Do you have a boyfriend now? My mom finally asked the question she had been dying to ask, nervously watching Maria. She blinked and then looked at me. George, do I have a boyfriend? I guess you do, right? A high heel stomped on my foot under the table. Yes, of course you do. I shouted, Mom, Dad, it's time to tell you. Maria and I are together, ha ha. We wanted to wait until we were more stable to tell you. My dad let out a long sigh of relief. My mom did too. I felt a bit sad. Seriously, back in college, I was considered one of the most popular guys, right? Even though the male to female ratio in my class was 3 to 7, I received a few love letters during my glory days, even if I had a phase of being a simp. I didn't deserve this. Why did my parents act like they had finally gotten rid of a bad burden? My mom said, a few days ago, your ex called the house. Really? What did she say? I felt a twinge of worrying. Since the last time, I took Mariotto to hospital. I felt like I had finally moved on, so I deleted all my contacts. After all, to welcome the new, you have to let go of the old. Your dad and I didn't understand much. Something about the house that the company wasn't covering the final mortgage payments. My mom looked at me seriously. Now that you're with Maria, you need to treat her well. She's been like a daughter to us. Cut off any ambiguous relationships. Maria spoke up for me. Auntie, he deleted her contact information. I saw it with my own eyes. It's her who won't leave him alone. Let's go. George, let's talk to her and sort this out. Back in my room, I still couldn't understand. Willow had used my employee benefit to buy a house, taking all the advantage. Even though I was foolishly in love, I accepted it, but she was about to get married, and I had made it clear in the last poll that I didn't want any more contact. Honestly, I didn't want to hear her cry anymore. What was once compassion and concession was now just annoyance. No girl, no matter how weak, should repeatedly use tears as a weapon to manipulate her partner, but things had to be resolved. I used Maria's phone to call her back. Willow, what's up? Hearing my voice, she responded excitedly. George, you finally answered. I knew you wouldn't. I interrupted. Get to the point. I'm using my girlfriend's phone. Don't waste her credit. Willow was silent for 10 seconds. Then her voice started to crack. Girlfriend, who is it the woman who showed up at the engagement party? You two got together so quickly. Did you never think about getting back with me? What about me? What am I to you? Maria, irritated, chimed in. A mistake from the past. An emotional blemish. George, such a nice guy. Let you push him to this point. And you still have the nerve to ask what you are. Willow's tone weakened, finally understanding. In my mind, I crossed out her name. The love, the hate, the unattainable, all were left behind. Willow, I just want to ask you one last favor, she said hesitantly. Your boss said that the housing benefits for management only cover the down payment, and the rest of the mortgage must be paid in installments within a specified period. Although you paid the down payment, the rest, not being an employee of the company is still a lot of money. You know that Itu Makoto's mother is seriously ill and his father is unemployed. Could you use your name to pay the mortgage? I almost laughed in anger. Willow, do you think I look like some sort of charity organization for hopeless romantics? Is there really someone who can't even scrape together the final payment on a 100 square meter house even after their ex paid the down payment? You can't be serious, she was sobbing uncontrollably. When did you become so harsh? I'm not asking you to give me money for nothing, even if you remember our time together. Maria suddenly slid a note over to me. It read, start recording. Ask her what she give you in return if you give her money. Her eyes sparkled with a sly fox-like cunning. I was puzzled but followed her suggestion. UH, if I give you money, what can you give me in return? Willow sniffled and weakly reply. Actually, when I'm with him, I am being affectionate of you. What the hell? So, if you, I mean, if Miss Maria agrees, we can maintain a secret lover relationship. I said I would think about it and quickly hung up. No, I couldn't hold it together anymore, folks. I recognized every word she said, but what was she talking about? What did she take herself for? And what did she take me for? Maria's uproarious laughter echoed through the room. So this is your delicate, pure, 
Well-educated first love, your pure white moonlight, Mr. Wong. My face turned down Maria, my mind in turmoil. Wait, how did Maria foresee this conversation? She told me to record it. Could it be that dot dot seeing me grasp the situation, she finally contained her laughter, leaned close to me, and whispered in my ear with a breath like orchids. A high-level hunter never plays low-level games. She told me that the day she took me from the wedding banquet, she had gathered the contact information of Fee to Makoto and all his relatives and friends. Because she was beautiful and her rent envelope was generous, no one suspected she was an outsider. Mary sent the recording to every single one of them. Back at the company, my mischievous boss had put up a big red banner saying, congratulations to the second boss on his new affair, starting fresh. What a load of nonsense, but I was genuinely grateful to him. If it weren't for his manipulation, that house would have legally been my responsibility to pay off. My boss sipped the tea I brought him and said, from the start, I thought something was off when you mentioned putting both names on the D. It's a good thing I prepared for this. I knew you wouldn't learn until you hit rock bottom, so I let you see her true colors yourself, a house within the second ring. Without our company's connection, that guy will be paying the mortgage for the rest of his life. Of course, if the contract expires and it's not paid off, they'll have to move out the same way they moved in. Back then, my boss wasn't a boss. Just my senior from university. Two young men with nothing but courage fought tooth and nail in the market. I stayed up late writing proposals and revising plans. He drank so much at business meetings that he ended up in the hospital. True brothers don't need empty words. I raised my cup. Come on, let's drink this tea and give me three more days off. Mainly, I want to take another look at that house. My boss scolded. George, you've got some nerve. Take my blessing and get out. Go quickly. Marianne and I naturally met each other's parents. Her father had moved abroad when he got promoted, and after retiring, he became the head of a local enterprise. I thought their standalone villa was already impressive. But then he pulled out a bunch of access cards. Take a place to live first and help me collect the rent. Your mom and I will retreat to the mountains for some relaxation. After all these years, I finally retired. Then, he gave me a slightly jealous look. I told Mariotto come back a long time ago, but she insisted on finding you first. Back in my day, I was quite the handsome man too. He was promptly dragged away by Maria's mother, who at him by the ear. Why are you interfering in the young couple's business? Ah. So this ear pulling technique was passed down through the family, I felt a chill down my spine. Maria, can we promise to talk things out without any ear pulling? She smiled sweetly, wrapping her arms around me. Why would you think that, my dear boyfriend? In my book, there's no breakup, only widow who. Whether it was her parents or mine, I explained to them that whether it was an engagement or marriage, everything would proceed at Maria's pace, after all. She waited for me for so long. Even if it meant courting her all over again, I had to show my sincerity. Maria mentioned a pre-sale rose gold ring encrusted with diamonds that she wanted to see. So I took her to try it on. She was in high spirits, shopping around Plaza all day. In the evening, we went to a pre-booked Japanese restaurant. David called. Pro, your ex-wife is in trouble. He paused, lowering his voice. Ah, uh, is Maria there? What's wrong? What can't I hear? out. You can, you can. That guy's family called off the wedding. They're telling everyone how much they spent on the bride price only to marry a loose woman who tried to become a mistress to a big boss. You know this news has spread all over the neighboring city, right? I laughed. Itu Makoto spreading rumors wouldn't mention that the big boss was me, as that would be shooting himself in the foot. And Willow isn't easy to deal with either. David continue, his excitement palpable through the phone. Guess what? She made a list demanding reimbursement for all the medical expenses over the years. One item was, he laughed so hard I worried he might pass out. One item was the cost for Itamakoto's treatment in the urology department. Everyone knows what that means. In short, the two families are tearing each other apart. It's better than watching street fights. This was the purpose of Maria's recording. She raised an eyebrow at me, feeling sorry. I looked down. Not really just reminded of that night when I got drunk. It's not a big deal among brothers, but it's a bit embarrassing with your girlfriend. Mariah burst into laughter. 
Oh, you mean the part about your assets being impressive? Now it seems you were wrongly accused. You said you're better looking and richer than him, and you can also deliver in marital duties. She shamelessly looked me up and down, Maria. How can you talk so boldly without even blushing? Because you're blushing enough for both of us. She reached over, pinched my cheek, and her hand wandered. What's this hard thing? The waitress froze behind the cherry blossom screen, unsure whether to come in or leave. I angrily pulled out a box and shouted. What else could it be? It's the diamond ring you wanted.